Right, ladies and gentlemen, isn't this an awkward angle for recording? It's giving me a double chin. Anywho, here's something you may be familiar with from my channel. Now, here's something else that you may be familiar with. First tea of the day, damn good. The paint box. And, uh, yes, we've continued working on this. More precisely to the point, Ash has continued working on this from a technical point of view. Now, this has moved forward a bit, not in the hardware itself, although I'll discuss that in a moment, but in the software, which is related to the hardware. This is getting confusing, but hopefully I'm about to enlighten you. So if I just remove the older keyboard out of the way, just a quick update on the hardware. Uh, Ash is currently building a power supply for this because it blew both of its power supplies. So he's currently beavering away, making a new power supply for this. We also now have cables that will independently, without this running, we hope, get at the data on both the floppy drive, which is back there, and theoretically, the hard drive. So we may be able to get the data off as a huge block on there. At least do some, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, parity, parity checks? Check sums on it to see if the data is in order. Talking of data in order, this is what uh, Ash has been up to. <coughs> right. Oh, just get them out. Now, if we look inside, uh, can't get it all the way down. TV stands in the way. Fire preparation and all that rubbish. We have two boards here. I'm not going to touch the edges because that's. don't want to give this an electric shock. We have two boards. These boards. Uh, computer 1 and computer 2 and there's only two uh, possibly four of these in existence and I have two of them <laughs> but this is the main CPU board and for this experiment really find it difficult to locate things on camera screen properly today I don't know why oh well uh, yeah anyway for this experiment we're not too interested in this, but that's, that's the main processor, six, uh, Motorola 68000. What we're interested on on this one is this board. This is uh, Computer 2, or Computer 2S on this one. Now, <clears throat> what we've been doing, this is the main board. Uh, this is the original, as far as we know. There's also a spare board, uh, which I sent down to Ash, and what he's done if you look here, you'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 of these microchips. Now, I believe there are more on the spare board because it's a later version. But what uh, we're going to try and not get too technical here. But what these microchips contain, these are known as EPROMs, Erasable Programmable Read Only Memories. And what these do, you can write programs to them. And they store the program in a read-only memory, so they can't be written over. Now these were written approximately 30 years ago and they are written by a process of, well they're deleted by a process of hitting them with UV radiation. And under these labels there's a small window so you can delete the information and then rewrite them. At least I think that's how it works. But anyway, because of how that UV works these have a 10 year lifespan, normally. They're guaranteed to keep your data in one piece for 10 years. This is 30 years later. And what I've done, I've sent the spare board down to Ash. I may have to send this one as well uh, to get these read. What he's done, he's taken, removed, because these are socketed, these chips can be taken out. And, yeah, actually, oh yeah. I've got the same problem here. What he's done, he's taken each of these chips out and he's put them in what's called an EEPROM burner or EEPROM reader. And what that has enabled him to do is read all the information on these chips. <laughs> now, this comes off in 
a binary or hexadecimal. Now, all you're going to get is loads and loads of hexadecimal numbers. But you don't know if that uh, information is right. So what they've got is something called a checksum. And basically, what it does is, well, it's more complex than this, but a basic version would be it adds up all the different bytes, divides them by a certain number, and you get a number on the screen. So that checksum will be displayed, and if that matches, uh, if that checksum is right, and matches the one, sorry, that checksum is stored and shown. So software can then do an independent checksum of these, and if it matches the checksum given from the chip, uh, I think that actually, don't quote me, but I think these are actually them written on there. But if they match that, then you know the data inside the chips is in one piece. So what I'm going to do quickly here is switch over to the laptop. I'm going to have a look at the raw data. I can't show you much of it, I'll just show you a few little screens because it is copyrighted to Quantel and we don't have permission to uh, disseminate it as yet under negotiation. But, so what I'm going to do is I'll show you a quick look at that first and then we'll show you how that's been used to start to bring the system back alive so it can actually be used in an emulator. Excellent. I'll be right back. Okay, welcome to uh, my laptop. I've turned all the lights off because this is a very reflective screen. I just need a quick sip of tea. Mm. Very nice. Right, what I've got on the screen here is a program called WinHex. And what this allows you to do is look at hexadecimal files. So what I'm going to do is press open. Uh, these are merged. But each of these files not the merged ones, represents one of the microchips, one of the EEPROMs. So the contents of each of the EEPROMs are in each of these files. So if I quickly click on Merge Bin, there we go. That is the contents of one of the uh, EEPROMs. And you can quickly scroll down. Now I'm not a huge expert on this, so don't ask me too much information. Uh, but what you can see, dun, 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 dun. each of these is a byte of information, not a bit, a byte, 8 bits. And as I'm scrolling round, I don't know if you can see that, <laughs> there we go, as I hit each, move over each bit, it tells me what that means in decimal. So this is actually uh, the operating system for the paint box. Excellent. There is some on the right hand side, this is like a comments section. Uh, FFF means there's nothing there. So that chip doesn't have a huge amount on it. Uh, I'm just trying to find the section where it just gives you a bit of text. Ooh, hey, there's Adobe After Effects. It's a work in progress for a huge project. But anyway, that's the contents of each of the files. And what that now allows you to do, you may have heard of a program, you may use a program called MAME. Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. In fact, my server there is a MAME dedicated machine. Now, MAME does not just allow you to play games. No, it allows you to emulate systems. Uh, yes, actually it allows you to emulate stuff. So what you can use it for, you can plug those ROMs in and actually recreate the paint box most excellent now before I come back, before I continue I've just got to find the keys that I need to do this so I'll be right back okay I've been uh, searching around I've got my instructions from Ash now the problem is that uh, 
we don't uh, know the entire memory map of the paint box as yet so it does have problems running so I have to get around that using different ways but if I press F5 Quantel 2001616 Pro for bootstrap monitor type question mark for help now this is frozen at the moment, it won't do anything. This is the diagnostic screen for the paint box uh, to switch it on before the operating system comes on. So if there's a problem, you can diagnose it. Now, what we have to do is type, is highlight this, control M, that gives us a memory monitoring window. So using this we can monitor the contents of memory. I think it's the ROMs. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask on that one. Now, what we do, uh, we have to click down here and tell it where to start. So, it's Reg PC M68K. It's what we're looking for. There it is, it's running away. So, if I now click on that digit there and press E for execute, boink. There we go, the paint box now fires up. So, if I click do de, we get rid of these. Just put them out of the way. Do, do, do. Actually, the interesting thing is, if you're watching this, of course you're watching this. You're watching the video. Uh, duh. This screen over here. Now, if you know what assembly code is, that is assembly code running, and you can see it looping around uh, as it executes the assembly code in the ROMs for the paint box. So this, to all effects, is the paint box running. Albeit in somebody else's body. Now, it's not, as I said, it's not the main operating system, it's not the drawing screen, this is just the diagnostic screen, uh, which would be used by an engineer to find any problems. So I can do things, if I click on the screen, I should be able to do things like uh, print, the red, print the registers. There we go. Uh, we can... Uh, I'm just trying to find things that will not cause it to... Uh, to crash. Uh, ah! Boink! There you go. There's a checksums for the ROMs. And in this emulator there are... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16! So the 16 ROMs uh, on that other board that Ash has got. So there we go, this is what we're up to at the moment. Now Ash is hoping to get this to do more once he's mapped the memory better. I don't know how he does that. Don't have a clue at the moment, so he's working on that. He's also building the new PSU for it. So on the day he started this up, uh, he was working for 20 hours solid. So Ash is putting a lot of time into this bugger and it's really appreciated because I wouldn't have a clue. Uh, so the other things we're doing, as I said, uh, we've got the cable which hopefully should get some information off of the floppy. Um, just put the lights back on. We also have a cable which hopefully will give us access to the data on the drive. I can't drag the paint box out at the moment because it's got no back plane in it. It, <laughs> the back plane is out. I took three and a half hours to remove. It's to diagnose where some of the cables go so we can map some of the uh, the ports on it. Big job. It's got to go back in now. Another big job. But I'm going to find time on my next set of days off to to do that. So that should be fun. So. Once again, thank you very much, Ash. This is really appreciated. Uh, because without his help, I don't think we could get this thing running. Uh, it may run. Uh, but we don't know. Uh, um, with the PSU problems, there's no way I could have done it. And hopefully, uh, one day, this could lead to an FPGA version, a uh, little single board version of the paint box, which could be plugged into tablets and used. At the moment, because we don't have permission to publish this source code from Quantel, 
there'd be just two of those in existence, one for me and one for Ash. But we hope to get permission of them to uh, take this further. So, that was a rather technical video. And yes, the paint box is now living, sort of. It's a definite step forward. Thank you very much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>